All right. Hello, everyone. Yeah, so, <laughs> oh, this has been an interesting day, interesting day. So uh, I'm glad that I finally got all this settled and I have my mic. I, I'm telling on myself, I did this whole presentation and I didn't have my microphone unmuted. <laughs> I was just like, oh my God. So we're going to do this again. <laughs> oh God. So there you go. That uh, There's a candid behind the scene looks at, uh, at what life working in cannabis is. It's, it's always something. So anyway, my name is Matt Hoffman and I'm the... I'm the man talking to you today about cannabis careers, opportunities in the cannabis space for work and what that means and, and the opportunities that, that come with it. And just right off the bat, the, the career opportunities are, are staggering. No, nowhere in history has there been such an opportunity to have a hand in shaping not only what work is and your career looks like, but an industry itself. Because cannabis in a legalized, regulated market is so new that there aren't that many, there aren't that many established ways, rules, formalities of doing things. And that's very attractive for entrepreneurs and problem solvers, independent workers, collaboratives, communicators, social butterflies, Anybody who is driven, hungry, and ambitious can do very well in cannabis. It's a place that not not too long ago was, well, and there's there still are places where if you say, yeah, I want to go get a job in the cannabis industry, you'll probably get laughed out of the room. And you could be laughing all the way to the bank because there are that many upsides to working in cannabis. And to where just not too long ago it was, like, whoa, that's kind of sketchy. Now it's, it's an essential industry, which is a huge shift given the history of cannabis and the way that states would actively use their resources to damage the industry. Now they're using those same resources to shield and protect it. And so that just shows how perspectives are changing around cannabis, but there's still a big stigma. And that's what I want to talk to you guys about today, that and, and see if I can provide some guidance, answer some questions, and show the professional side, the, the serious side of, of cannabis. Cannabis is interesting in that it's a space where there it, it is serious. It's, it's serious business. It's serious money. And the services and the goods that are created and provided have serious effects on people's lives. It, but it's also weed. So it's it's... You know, it's, it's serious, but it's not that serious. It's loose, but it's not too loose. It's cool, but not too cool. It's square, but not too square. So it's an interesting, it's an interesting space that is very diverse when it comes to people's backgrounds. So we see people that have backgrounds in beauty and, and health executive roles. We see people like me who grew copious amounts of ganja and, and owned a dispensary that are bearded and uh, that get in. There are many walks of life and many backgrounds and the more diversity there is in the industry, the better. And we don't, we don't want the industry to look like Matt Hoffman, the bearded white guy. And there is there, and, and there is a serious, um, there's a serious likelihood of that happening. So, that's why I'm here to talk to you guys today is to shed some light on the opportunities for everybody in the cannabis industry and see if I can help you get into the cannabis field. So why should you listen to me? Who the hell am I and why should you care? So that's, that's first of all, if someone was talking to me, I'd want to know, well, what do you know about it? So my background is in cannabis operations. I've started and, and operated a vertical grow here in West Michigan and owned a dispensary. I've been in cannabis for 11 years. In that time, we've won three caregiver cups consecutively and, and, and took our business as, as high as it could go for, 
for the environment and the time that we're in. What I do now is I own handgrown.jobs <laughs> right there, which is a, a culmination of, of my and, and my team's experience in the cannabis industry. And we thought that it would be a, a pretty neat way to help people like you who are interested in pursuing a career and that's by sharing our knowledge, experience, and insights in a digital format and play matchmaker. We're like the Indeed of Weed or the Match.com of cannabis careers. So we connect you, job seekers, with cannabis employers. It doesn't cost anything for you. I don't take a percentage of your wage or anything like that. The employers pay me to put up jobs on the job board, which is handgrown.jobs, and for you to apply. And so what we've done is we've built some wraparound services that are there to help you, to give you an idea of standard wages. We've sampled all the other industries and give you sample, sample wages so you know that you're getting a fair wage or so you know what you're, so you have a good position when you're walking into an interview and, and you start doing salary negotiations. Um, the next thing's, Probably by the time that this video comes out, maybe within two weeks, there'll be a map on handgrown.jobs where, like Zillow, where you can see different jobs around the map. So you can start to plan logistics and, and see where these businesses are physically in the world. And the next thing that I'm, I'm the most excited about is kind of like what I'm doing here, where... Given the world that we live in now, most of the interviews are going to be Skype or, or Zoom. And so what we've done is we have created a, an opportunity for job seekers like you and employers to upload a five-minute video. You just take your phone. There'll be like five questions that, that I'll pose. And it'll be an opportunity for you to put your best foot forward and just say, for example, hi, I'm Matt Hoffman, and I've worked in cannabis for 11 years. My expertise is in cultivation and running and owning a dispensary. I'd love to be a part of an executive team. I'm hardworking, usually first one in the door, last one out. I'm Even though that I've done this for a very long time, I'm still hungry to learn, and I'm a social butterfly. I love talking to people. I run my mouth for a living, and I would be happy to run my mouth about your team and about your company and share the insights and the knowledge that I have with my other team members. I love cannabis. I love the opportunities that it creates for people, and I want to be a part of a, of a company that values me and pays me a fair wage, but also my inputs and my opinions and, and my values about how people should be treated. You should hire me because I'm <laughs> awesome. This is Matt Hoffman, and I will see you at the next interview. I mean, something like that. Not as not as flippant, but <laughs> but it's an opportunity to to show who you are and 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 give a face and a voice to a resume. So, on the other hand, we're doing the same for employers, where they could say, for example. Hi, I'm Matt Hoffman. I am the owner of Handgrown. We, by the time you see this, we'll have already secured funding for a 40,000 plant grow. And we are looking for cultivation team members to come in and help us grow these 40,000 plants. And we're looking for managers that can help schedule and manage people. We value input, we value diversity not only in creed and skin color, but also in mindsets and opinions. We want to argue, we want to debate respectfully with everybody so that way we're not, that way we have a stronger team, that way we have a stronger collective approach. We're not just about ourselves and thumping our chest and saying, oh, we're so <laughs> great because we've done this forever. No, we want people that are communicators and collaborators who want to be a part of something special, who want long-lasting careers, want to be a part of something where they're valued and their opinions and, and their thoughts 
are considered and put on the table. If you think that you're somebody that wants to be a part of this company, then apply to hand ground. So it's a way for <coughs> employers to say, hey, this is who I am, this is what I'm about. It's a way for you as a job seeker to say, hey, this is who I am, this is what I'm about. So there's my, there's my sales pitch, it's over. <laughs> it's, yeah, um, but it, in honesty, all the resources that we have are here to help you, the job seeker. Uh, getting into cannabis, there's a lot of unknowns and there's not a lot of resources. And so some of the resources that I'm gonna talk about next are again here to help you guys. And so we've got handgrown.jobs, which is an ever-growing, robust support system to just connect you to employers. We already talked about that. The next thing is a nonprofit organization called R Cannabis, O-U-R Cannabis. And what that does is scholarships for, and I'm not gonna get too into the weeds on any of this stuff, but it does scholarships for people who uh, are pursuing higher education with cannabis degree emphasis. So for example, there's, there's a guy named Matt <laughs> and he is a veteran and he goes to a Michigan University, a university here in Michigan. He uses GI Bill to pay for his education, which is pretty normal. And when he declared that he was a cannabis studies major, the, the, the federal government said, no way, Home Slice, we're not paying for that. And they Removed his, removed his GI Bill, <clears throat> which, candidly, we think that's... <laughs> and I'm probably going to bleep that out, but we think that's... We think that's... No, we know that's... <laughs> but that's not right. And so through fundraising, uh, individual gift donations, we created a scholarship to offset the injustice that's being done for for Matt, who served his country, who wants to participate in the cannabis industry. So that's one of the things. The next thing is you're at, you're at Grand Valley, so there's robust resources to help you make a resume, practice interview, develop some skills around getting a job. Now, if you were out in the community, then those resources would be available to you through, let's say, Michigan Works, except if you were pursuing a career in cannabis. So if you went into Michigan Works and said, hey, I need help making a resume so I can get a job as an events planner in the cannabis industry, they would say, hey, I'm sorry, we cannot help you. That would jeopardize our federal funding. And that's a problem because there are a lot of people out there that need help with those points of entry like resumes. If a resume gets you an interview and the interview gets you a job, then if you don't have a resume or the resume is, doesn't reflect your skills or your personality, then that's a missed opportunity for not only that person as a job seeker, but for the employer to have a fantastic employee. So we've stepped in through the nonprofit org, our cannabis, and are making those workforce resources available. That way anybody who wants a job in the cannabis career has the opportunity to get one because they could get a resume, a professionally polished resume specific to cannabis jobs made for free, practice interviews, practice tech interviews, and develop skills. These are things that the nonprofit does all day, every day. And if it's something that you need help with, it costs nothing. There, I'll put a link right here to some of the resources that we have online. You can register and, and participate in the class and the classes and, and, and get a career get a cannabis career growing. So the next thing that we have is a podcast. It's another way to highlight what working in the cannabis field is like. So it's called Weed Works Blunt Talk about working in, in marijuana. And it's candid interviews with people that actually work in the cannabis field. Bud tenders, growers, executives, human resources managers, consultants, across the board. I've had interns and I've had executives of the largest cannabis companies in the world on the show. And it's all to give a perspective, a diverse perspective of what it's like to work and participate in the cannabis industry. So wherever you get your podcast, it's available. If you want to participate in the podcast, then send an email to this link right here. <laughs> 
and and we'd be happy to talk to you. But it's just a way to shed more light on on the unknown and uncertain cannabis industry. More often than not, as a point of contact for employment, I'm asked, is this legit? Am, am I going to be treated right? Am I going to be treated fairly? Am I going to get a living wage? How do I get in? What is it like working in the industry? What are some of the pitfalls? What are some of the, what are some of the things that I, what are the advantages? What could I get from this? And so through the podcast, those are things that, that, that I answer and also have other people that have gone through and that are in the field share their experiences. So it's not just me going blah, 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 because anybody talking for any amount of time is pretty boring. I know. <laughs> so <laughs> we try to get as many voices uh, as possible. But to answer some of those questions about what it's like working in the industry, I reached out to a colleague and a, and a friend of mine named Thomas Tong. And so we're going to see a video here in a minute. And um, it's the end of the day. And what you'll find in, in cannabis is everybody works their butt off. It is, it's an industry where you work a lot and you work hard. Work, 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 work. The difference is, is that everyone that's in cannabis wants to be there. It's not like, oh, there's no opportunity, so I just have to take this job because that's all there is. No, that's not it. There's nobody in cannabis that doesn't want to be here, period. And so what you'll find is employee satisfaction, employee health, employee happiness is much higher than other industries. And that's really exciting. So this is the end of the day for me and for Thomas. And so it's pretty casual, but I asked him a couple questions that I thought that I put myself in your shoes and thought, okay, I would want to know this given, given that most of you are hospitality and tourism management studies majors. That's a mouthful. <laughs> so let's head over to Thomas. He is, um, He's very well known and very well respected in the cannabis industry. He shares his contact information. He is definitely someone, especially given your interest, your line of work, your course of studies, that I highly recommend reaching out to Thomas to, to find entry levels or to find connections within events in cannabis. So we're going to go to this video right now of, of me talking to Thomas it's about 15 minutes or so, and then we'll come back. <laughs> oh, the wheels are coming off. We'll come back, and uh, I'll just share my final, final thoughts and overview of the industry, and then we'll sign off. Okay, here we go. Hey Thomas, thanks for thanks for participating in this. I know it's going to be really helpful for people interested in the cannabis industry to hear from somebody like you who's out in the field. So thanks for participating. Really appreciate it. Absolutely, Matt. Thank you for having me. Yeah, happy to. So, if you would, for those that don't know you, uh, you're definitely a person to know in the in the industry, especially in events. So, give us a quick introduction and talk about what you do in the event space and. In cannabis. I run an organization <laughs> called Cannabis Aid and we've been doing events for a few years now specifically around cannabis. Our goal is to empower our community and bring us together uh, and create a platform for our collective success and mm -hmm. we all do need to come together and be partners, create alliances, uh, learn from each other, this is what uh, the events are really for. Uh, the events also uh, have moved and changed uh, throughout the years. At first, it was just about organizing and supporting legalization and prop. And then next it was, let's get going and you know, organizing for knowledge and bringing in experts from other places and let's just get going and support each other as a community getting going. So we had those type of events. Mm. 
then now we have a framework of both commercial and caregiver. So we've had events for to honor all groups. Um, with the maturity of the commercial model, now we have uh, licensing of events, legalization of events uh, for consumption as well as as commerce. And so again, another graduation of a new type of event in in alignment to where our community and our framework and our market is going. Mm. Yeah. So who who are your events for? We have multiple events uh, for 2021. Of course, in 2020, we had to cancel our events because yeah. of COVID. But 2021, we have four massive events. One of them is dedicated to military veterans. You know, our goal is to bring between 10 to 15,000 military veterans. Wow. And, uh, it, military veterans really need uh, cannabis. It's a, something that's very, very helpful in their recovery and in how they live their lives. Yeah. Uh, so very supportive of our military. Uh, second, uh, we recognize we are in a place of commerce and consumption and we, we are uh, entertaining to have a, a large event in Hart Plaza in downtown Detroit. Uh, so that would be in the middle of the year, fall coming up, um, and this is all about entertainment and and uh, being free and honoring our culture around cannabis while at being compliant and in in uh, leveraging the framework that MRA has put together for such events. Uh, so. Uh, I think that's coming 2021. We have multiple type events. Some of them are recreational and celebratory and cultural in nature. Others, such as our state conference in October of 2021, is much more educational. It brings business, industry, and government together. It's nice. about policy. It's about advancing our whole industry overall. So yeah. every event is different. Uh, because we're very multifaceted as a community. Mm, yeah, that's true. Yeah, wow. Okay, so yeah, you've got a pretty good spread of, of what you do. That's, that's great. I mean, you, you're definitely the guy to talk to, so thanks again. So I've got three questions um, just to ask you, and I don't want to take up too much of your time, so we're just going to dive right in. So question number... Question number one is, can you explain to us what the difference about events in the, in the cannabis space are? What's different about a cannabis event compared to a regular event? Sure. The first is that it's a regulated substance, <clears throat> you know, and with that, uh, you have to be 21 and up. Uh, there are all kinds of rules around the regulation of consumption in a public area. Uh, so uh, you really do have to, uh, the biggest thing is the regulation and the legality of our events now. Before we, we, they fell in a gray area so we could have a high times and it not be licensed by the state. Yeah. <laughs> right? We could have a Clio, you know, cultivation uh, and and it's it's very cultural and historic in our community but now we're ushering in regulation and we're threatening those older models of events are threatened now we can't yeah. really do that and at some point they'll probably enforce be, uh, because there are regulations in place for that now uh, so we've chosen to just dive into the regulation and and say, okay, what can we do with the, these regulations, and that and it still allows us to bring our community together. Mm, yeah. Uh, so what's different for a really around an event? There's about four levels of permitting needed. Mm, okay. First, you got to get the state level permitting to be an event uh, licensee. Then you got to get the temporary event license for that specific event. Mm. 
And you got to get the city municipality level to approve it. Then you got to get the facility level in the lease to approve it. Yeah. You got four levels of licensing that's required to have a successful regulated event. And that doesn't happen in other areas in, in event management. So, so very unique. Yes. So it's, so it's, because I don't know. So it's more than what would be required to do an alcohol event? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. That, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can, it, with events, it, with MRA, the regulations allow, for example, if we have a big, it, when we have our big event in Hart Plaza in downtown, uh, we'll have cannabis licensees selling product. We'll have entertainment. We'll have all kinds of cultural surprises related to cannabis, right? But we'll also have alcohol vendors selling beer. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's yeah. awesome. That That's is so awesome. The proper permitting at the city level. Um, and that's now we may have a beer section area. They may okay. require us to not formally mix them. Gotcha. We are going to do everything we need to do to honor the regulations and even advance the regulation and how it should be exercised. We want everybody to win. Right. That leads to my next question is, it sounds like you have a really good handle on where we are today. Where are we in 10 years, five years? What do events look like in cannabis in the future? I think that as cannabis, cannabis becomes normalized, that we don't have events that are just around cannabis. I, am, I know, for example, weddings that are choosing mm, yeah. to have a licensed provisioning center uh, join uh, their reception and they're willing to pay the cost for the licensing for that evening. And so you look at these different and then they're willing to do engage with cannabis aid and say, can you set up an event and host it for us? Because you are legally and right, you are licensed for this. Yeah. You know. yeah. Now all of a sudden it opens up a whole new realm of, it's not a cannabis event. It's a life event that happens to just have <laughs> cannabis in it. Yeah. It's not an alcohol wedding. It's just a wedding. It's not a cannabis exactly. wedding. It's a wedding. Correct. And gotcha. so that's where I think we're going is that although we will have cultural events on the occasion that truly bring the diehards together, yeah. we're normalizing cannabis in our everyday lives now. Love and it. therefore, I see events really shifting here over time. Yeah. Okay. That's good to know. Thanks. Thanks for that. The second question is, tell me the types of jobs that are around events in cannabis. So let's say I'm, I'm in the Grand Valley class that we're talking to and I'm graduating with a degree in hospitality and tourism management. What's a good, what, what, what opportunities do I have? What jobs are available? Yes, I think the first thing is, is uh, capacity to manage and small little projects. Project management is really, really important as a skill. Um, being able to uh, do outreach. We are community driven, network driven. We don't send digital you know, emails out and invite folks. We pick up the phone. We, <laughs> we, we're in a deep network. We yeah. all kind of know each other. And when something's happening, we all come together and say, let's help support that person. Let's, you know, it's already hard enough to have events. Right. Right. So, and no one's running to the bank when it comes to events. That's, that is for sure. That's <laughs> a gift to, to the community, you know, unless you're a, a big, big events company like High Times at one right. point. Even now, High Times cannot operate in Michigan. They're not right. Right. Yeah. Okay. So,
it sounds like project management, communication are key. Got to be good on the phone and kind of dive in head first. That seems to be the way that the cannabis industry is, is there's no half-stepping. You can put some formal titles on it, for, such as event manager. Okay. Say a uh, sponsorship uh, 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 sales, uh, you know, or, uh, uh, show setup and show management, uh, the actual running of registration and all that stuff, uh, executing on the sponsorships and delivering on your promise from pr printing graphics to delivering the data to them to following up after the conference and making sure they got value out of it. So it's like any other business or well, definitely, and then there's the traditional, there's the accounting side of it where we have to bill and this and that. It's a full fledged business. Um, so events management has a lot of different opportunities in the cannabis sector. Uh, everything you'll learn regulation, you, you learn, you know, how to throw on a successful event and marry in other types of, a, of life events, whether it be a birthday or an anniversary or a very yeah. special evening that's infused. Yeah. Okay. Events can go in a lot of different dimensions. I think at this point. Okay, so if somebody if somebody got in, they would have a whole world of opportunities. Correct. I would hire, for example, someone that has a strong positive attitude yeah. and a caring for the community and uh, has a level of work ethic because it is hard. Yeah. <laughs> have to reach out and um but yeah we would we would look cannabis aid would look at anybody that's really really eager to participate in the community through becoming through participating with events whatever role you play whether it be you're setting up booths whether you're selling sponsorships whether you're you know working with mu mu you know music folks and performers whatever or not you get to meet a lot of people. You get a <laughs> whole community that's a massive value. If you mm -hmm. care for being in the industry, you get to know everybody. Yeah. And you learn a lot. Yeah. That, uh, so the value of events, I think, in participating and in working in events, I think that that's very unique. Uh, compared to some other industries. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the growers are just, they're in the garden, they're not talking to anybody but their staff, and people in events are social by nature, so, right. yeah. Well, on that note, what are some parting thoughts or advice that you'd have for, for the students of the class? Um, first of all, be very, very, be positive around events, 2021 is coming around and we'll have some great events coming. If you are interested in participating in cannabis aid events, we're definitely, we're premature, but we're ramping up for 2021 in the late quarter. So definitely come and consider looking at our events and looking at who, uh, uh, to participating in some way. Yeah. Uh, there are other event companies out there in the cannabis sector and other licensees that have events. Consider working directly with a dispensary that has an event license. If you're really gun ho you may be able to create events for them. You know, even as an independent contractor, they have nothing to lose. Everything to gain. So be creative in this new world of events because it's not set. You can right. Do it. Yeah, you nailed it on the head. You, uh, yeah, I would. If I said anything, I would just echo everything that you just said. So <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. Well, thanks for taking the time out of your busy day to just answer some of these questions and and give us insights. One, one last question. I'm going to put you on the spot. Sure. Do you have an intern program? 
Um, we have a, what I'm going to call a soft interim program. We piloted it out yeah. uh, last year, but this year with uh, everything occurring with COVID, we did not advance it. Gotcha. We will advance it in 2021 because we had direct relationships with the universities and higher education institutions that offer degrees in cannabis uh, cannabis technologies of different kinds. Yeah. So yes, we will offer internships of different kinds with formal institutions as well as just eager individuals that want to learn. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. That's great. Well, thanks for taking the time to talk to us. I really appreciate it. And I'm sure, well, I'm sure I'll see you out in the cannabis field. For sure. Thank you, Matt, for having me. And we look forward to seeing uh, what 2021 has to offer for everyone. Yeah, Thank you. for sure. All right. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thomas had, had some good points there in that network. The cannabis industry... The longer you're in it, the higher your career climbs, the smaller the world gets. This industry is relationship-based, and it is just simply calling someone and just saying, hey, this is what I'm doing. Can you help? This is what I need. And they'll go, oh, yeah, I can help. It's just, it's just constantly helping each other figure all this out. <laughs> They're... I have my expertise. It's in growing, growing cannabis and setting up giant grow facilities. That's what I know how to do. So when people need help with that, they come to me for that. When I need help with events, like making this video to help you guys, I just called Thomas. I was like, hey, I'm doing this for, for these students. Are you game? He was like, oh, yeah, for sure. It, that's the way this industry is. It's very personal. It's very relationship-based. And... On that note, as, as far as relationships, here's, here's my advice. Be a human being when you reach out to people. Do not send mass uh, MailChimp emails. Don't send mass LinkedIn emails. Don't do it. Reach out and be a genuine person and just say, hey, I'm curious about what Cannabis Aid does. My name is Matt Hoffman. It, can you tell me about this? Reach out and say, hey, I'm curious. What does handgrown.jobs do? Happily, I'll tell you. It's having a personal connection will, will just carry the day in cannabis. So the next thing is you're going to find this over and over and over again that attitudes are what get people hired. Your experience, your background, and some of the skilled positions but let's be honest, there's probably no one in this class that's going to go and be an, analytic, an analytical chemist. Okay, so the, the relationships matter. The attitude you have matters. The skills can be taught through school or through on-the-job training, but having the right attitude is what makes all, the big, all of the big difference. It's the biggest difference maker across the board. You can hear this on the podcast, the Weed Works Blunt Talk About Working in Marijuana podcast, every executive, every human resources, every person, every manager, general manager that I talk to says that the attitude is the number one thing. So if you have a positive attitude, if you're a go-getter, if you're a problem solver, if you're ambitious and you're driven, you're going to do great in the cannabis industry. It's a place where that is probably your biggest your your biggest ticket in the door. And I can't, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm not going to say here and repeat myself over and over again. I could because it, that's, it's that important. So some parting things here is your attitudes. Have a good attitude. It sounds so generic, but it's so true. Build a network, build a reputation, reach out to people in a genuine way. About hiring. So... In Michigan, which is where we are, we live in a wholesome, as far as cannabis is concerned, we live in a pretty wholesome place. The rest of the country is not like this. There are scummy employers. There are, period. It sucks. I, I wish it wasn't that way, and I, 
I do everything in my power to try to just choke them and make them not exist. The industry hates these people, at least in, in Michigan. We're the gold standard of how people should be treated. But like I said, the rest of the, the rest of the country isn't necessarily this, this way. So you need to be mindful of what you're getting into. There is risk that people, employees have been arrested. Whole companies have been taken down. It happens. So, and it, it, to say that it won't happen is, is, is false. And I'm, I'm not trying to paint doom and gloom and scariness, but I want you guys to walk into the industry with your eyes wide open. Does it happen often? Yeah, at companies that are doing illegal things, at 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 places that are acting in a non-compliant way, absolutely. And should it happen? Absolutely. Do you need to be aware of those of those things? Absolutely. And there are things that you can do to protect yourself. So my recommendations are get to know a company. Use the power of social media, of LinkedIn. LinkedIn is fantastic. Find employees at that company and just get to know them. Just say, hey, I'm thinking about working here. I'm curious, what's it like? Just that phrase right there. Hey, I'm curious about working at handgrown.jobs. What is it like? And just have candid conversations with people. Facebook forums, Discord, I'll put a link right here. There's a, there's a, employee discord you can join talk to people that are working in the industry find out about those businesses reputations and also if you really want to do your diligence then go to the whatever state you're interested in working in for michigan it's lara which is licensing regulatory affairs mra which is the marijuana regulatory agency and you can verify a license. So you're making sure that you're working at a licensed, a legitimate licensed facility. And also when you, when you work somewhere, if someone asks you to do something that you're not comfortable doing, make them provide documentation to you that, that explains the legality of what you're doing. And if it's something that you're not comfortable doing, don't do it. Don't do it. Do not do it, period. And what you'll find is, the, the cannabis operators that are doing it right, they do not bend the rules ever, period, not even, not even a millimeter. And the companies that do, stay away from. I can't point you at any of those, to be honest with you, because I don't do business with them. If I was aware of them, I would tell you their names. At this point in Michigan, all the, all the, the their, not everybody's happy. There is, there, there is some ruffling of feathers going on. Whether those, are, whether those issues are substantiated or not, I don't know, so I, I'm not going to weigh in. Um, there, was, uh, there was a dust-up over in Ann Arbor about, about uh, workplace um, employee treatment and workplace discrimination. I invited both parties to, to come on to the WeedWorks podcast and talk about it. The aggrieved employees never followed through, so I don't know, so I'm not going to speak about it because I don't know. But if, there are, but if there are things that I do know, then I most certainly will tell you. But what I can say is that every company that we do business with here at Handgrown, I talk to the boards. I talk to the executives. I help place some of the executives, and I work very closely with the human resources if I don't place the human resources person. And so I know these businesses and because of the position that I'm in, I have the prerogative to or not to do business with them. If I don't like somebody as a company, if I don't like someone as a company, if I don't like what they're doing, I don't do business with them because I don't want to send people to a place where they're going to be treated poorly because it will reflect poorly on me. And also that's a really <laughs> thing to do and I'm not about that. So... Without toting my own flag too much, that's the difference between utilizing handgrown.jobs and Indeed and Zip and whoever else. But in closing, because I got to split because I messed this up, so that's on me. In closing, any resources that I have, I'm happy to share wage recommendations, practice interviews, resume workshops. All of that is on ourcannabis.org, O-U-R-Cannabis.org. I'll put a link 
all these links in the description. I'm doing like a YouTube here. <laughs> I'll put all the links to the handgrown.jobs, rcannabis.org, the Weedworks podcast, and the Discord. Don't hesitate to reach out to me. Just do it like a normal person, not a scripted robot. And if there's anything that I can do to help you get a job in the cannabis field, I will because I want to see you out in the cannabis field. This is Matt Hoffman. Thank you, Professor Lipford, for the opportunity to participate in this class again. It's uh, This is a unique one. It was way more fun to be in, in physical class, as I'm sure you guys would agree. But uh, this works. So don't hesitate to reach out. If I can't help you, then I will find someone in my network that can. So thanks, guys. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I got to go. I'll talk about this all freaking day for hours and hours, but I got to go. So have a good afternoon, morning, day, whatever local time it is for you. And uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Bye-bye.